with different companies and startups, I've come to realize that remote tech teams have developed a very bad rep. And that is a fact that most of the people who present themselves as remote teams tend to be unreliable. So they start an engagement and they actually do not communicate clearly that they're what they're able to do. And then the companies get disappointed. And in doing so, they essentially ruin opportunities for other remote teams. So what we want to do is to change that. And so today I'm going to take you to the conference that we have in Singapore so that you can see what's out there so that we can talk to some of these companies and startups and see what we can provide for them and change that mindset so that they can see that there are good, reliable, trustworthy, credible remote teams in Africa that they can use, partner up with, collaborate with and get the work done on time and on budget and are able to also articulate any issues that they come up with very clearly because those are some of the things that they want to know that's the value we provide to companies that we work with so let's go and see what we find out from these startups and companies Okay, so we're at Forte Biotech. Ooh. Forte Biotech, okay? Okay. Yes. So what our company does is that we develop an easy-to-use on-site PCR diagnostic kit to detect diseases in prawns. Yes. Oh, so you're detecting diseases in prawns. Yes, so this is actually taken in Vietnam itself. This is in Vietnam? This is in Vietnam. Oh my goodness, yes. so, you're detecting diseases in prawns. prawns. Yes, correct. So like wow. you know your COVID PCR test, right? But wow. instead of testing COVID, you're testing diseases in prawns. Not COVID, prawn disease. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Yes. wow. Yes, correct. I wasn't expecting yes. that. Yes, so... I know, it's very niche. <laughs> yeah, many people are shocked. <laughs> yeah. So correct. why did you choose a, sh a shrimp? Choose I'm it? saying shrimp because yes. most people don't know what prawns are. But... Prawns, yeah, correct. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, so why did you select shrimp of all species of all animals in the world? Okay, because, right, our founder, so our founder, Kit Yong, he's not here today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> he's not here today, but he's in the video. Okay, so what he does is that his relatives are actually prawn farmers. Mm -hmm. So he has actually seen the struggle struggles that they face mm -hmm. with diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like one of his cousins, right, opened a pond farm. Mm -hmm. But like within two days when the disease hit, his whole pond oh, no. was one hundred percent mortality. Oh no. Yeah, correct. So it's like, you know, when you invest in stock market, mm -hmm. you invest everything mm -hmm. and then the market and everything, crash, yeah. you lose everything. Same Sad. thing. Yeah. Yes. So we function as a stop loss. Yeah, that's mm. what our company does. So this diagnostic kit is not really just for diagnosis, it serves as a surveillance screening test. So with our kit, you are able to detect three diseases, three common diseases that plague prawns, mm -hmm. and then produce results within one hour. Wow. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. So let me ask you, yes. how big is your market? Like so, your target market? Okay, so our target market, so currently Vietnam, right? Within Asia, it actually produces 16.34% of the global consumption of shrimp. Oh, yes. I see. And our potential market, so we are planning to expand towards like Indonesia, Thailand, uh, and Philippines. Mm -hmm. So these three countries together with Vietnam actually produce 34% of global consumption of shrimp. Yes. I see. And so how long have you been uh, doing this? Okay, so this company was founded in 2021. Okay. We are currently at beta testing phase, so okay. half paid trials. So currently our diagnostic kit goes for 14 USD for one kit. $14? 14, 14 USD. Okay. And our device goes for 400 USD. Okay. So this is a one-time purchase. Okay. And this kit is a monthly subscription. I see. Yeah. Okay. And so this will be used on how many shrimp? Like if on I have a... If, if, oh, how many prawns? Yeah, so if I have a farm that... A typical farm has how many prawns? Okay. So within one pond, you can have up to like maybe uh, one billion prawns. One billion yes. prawns. One and, billion prawns. Okay. So then how many of these kits would I need? to okay. test 1 billion prawns. Okay, so on average for 1 billion prawns, you would have a sample of 3. 
three prawns. But oh. these three prawns are weakened prawns. So weak, they have they exhibit abnormal behavioral changes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because of the disease. Mm-hmm. So something like okay, so these three diseases, right? To put it simply, WSSV, white spot syndrome virus. Mm-hmm. Your stream grows slow. Uh, sorry, not grow slow. They swim very slow. They swim near uh. the surface. And they see. present with white spots. I see. Yeah. So there's gross pathological changes. Mm. So you identify these prawns and send them for testing. Mm. So how do you do the testing? Is that you will remove the liver. Oh of the prawn. wow. Yes. So the liver is actually located right under the head. So if you see, there's like a black ball, right, mm-hmm. in the head. That is the liver. We take that out. We mash it and then we put it into our sample. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our reagents. Mm-hmm. Or you can test the pond water. So mm-hmm. what we recommend farmers to do is that so in a month they will have to perform thirteen tests, one three tests. Mm-hmm. So ten times they will test the water mm-hmm. and three times they will test the prawn. Mm-hmm. Yes. So they will do the test every three to five days. Yeah. Wow. So then how long would one uh, kit last? One month? So uh, one month we were sent thirteen tests. Thirteen test kits. Mm. So one test kit is for one sample. I see. Yeah, and you are able to detect three diseases okay. with one kit. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Wow. So what are some of the interesting stories or achievements that you've had so far? Okay. So actually with our kit, right? I, this is not the intended purpose. Mm-hmm. So the intended purpose is to detect disease, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the Vietnam farmers actually told us that he was using our kit to actually determine the performance of different medications that he put in our, his pond. Mm-hmm. So okay, antibiotics for aquaculture is extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. So he was trying to switch to probiotics instead, mm-hmm. like supplements. So he was using our kit to actually detect the performance of the to track the performance of the probiotics. Mm-hmm. This is our founder. Mm. So he's Singaporean. Our co-founder is Vietnamese. Uh. Yeah. So we have two companies, one based in Singapore, which does the R and D, mm-hmm. and one based in Vietnam, which does the sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they go on site, speak to farmers. Mm-hmm. They show the farmers how to do the test, mm-hmm. and the farmers like this had gained a lot of traction in. Vietnam itself, mm. and most of the farmers actually talk to each other. Mm. So when we go to conventions in Vietnam, we don't even need to tell them what's going on. They're like, oh, we they know, know for the bio- know for biotech. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, like, how much does your kit go for, and where can I buy it? So ah. that's a really good sign. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's correct. good. Very good. So, and where are you? Can uh, the farmers find your kit? Is it online? Is it through like uh, pharmacies or what? They actually contact our sales and marketing team. Yeah, oh, correct. so right now you're just still doing. Yeah, yeah. still doing like door to door. Door to door. Okay. Yes, okay. Correct. Okay. But we are looking towards integrating this, like all the data that we collect into our app. So we are currently developing a software solutions actually. I see. Yeah. So speaking of your software solution, so who is building your software solution? Do you know? Oh, we are actually hiring interns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, interns and like, you hire to interns in yes. Singapore or in, in Vietnam? Singapore. In Singapore and Vietnam, actually. I see. Yeah, ah. To actually develop the framework because okay. currently, uh, so what we have right now is a diagnostic kit, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. ultimately, what we are trying to work towards is one, we assess the risk. Mm-hmm. So risk to farmers is mm-hmm. disease, mm-hmm. environmental pollution, these kind of things, right? Yeah, yeah. Now we are trying to like how. Like develop ways to mitigate this risk. Mm-hmm. So we are trying to build like models, mm. risk analysis models, mm. to actually help the farmers in decision making as well. I see. Yeah. So we are developing environmental sensors, water sensors, because uh-huh. many of these diseases actually come from the water itself. I see. Yeah. So we are actually trying to like it help improve the water quality and stuff. I see. Yeah. So Interesting. We, yeah. We are oh. looking for water sensors. Okay. Yeah, and integrating all this data so into a integrated system. Like all right. Interesting, yes. yeah. So, yeah. So, have you ever considered using the talent from Africa to develop your software? Yes, yes, yes. We're actually very open. Yeah. To, uh, collaborations right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. I mean, like, this is very fascinating. Yeah. You know, I'm, this, I've never seen something like this right? before, so yes. I'm very surprised. You yeah, know? many this people are actually very surprised. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So, definitely, we should we should keep in touch and see if there's a way we can help you guys with your development of your software solutions all right well thank you thank you (laughs) well i just been wowed over and over with this um you know forte biotech where they are creating a testing kit like a covid testing kit but for shrimps and so they're just been telling me that usually when they find some shrimps that are not well that they have some diseases, they can actually harvest them early 
and they're still edible. We can still eat them. So it sounds like some of the cuisines that I've been having in Singapore may be using some sick shrimp. Yes. Which <laughs> I didn't know. Now I know. <laughs> so yeah, cool. Good to know. Very informative. Thank you. You learn something new every day. I know. Day. <laughs> every day. Every day something new. So yeah, so this is Forte Biotech. And so, yeah, if you are a shrimp farmer, whether it's in Asia or, or other parts of the world, you know, reach out to them. That's up. Yeah, hit them up, hit them up, hit them up. And you can use their testing kits to test your shrimp so that they're not all dead, you know, in one day. So, all right, thank you. All right, so this one is what? Space Match. Space Redefining match, yeah. the future of flexi work. Yeah. So, what's this about? Similar to Airbnb, but for workspace. So uh, ah. the underutilized office space, and any company can uh, book this uh, workspace. So, for example, if there is a company that has uh, 100 offices, but only 50 of them are used, then uh, they can un they can sublease the rest of the spaces. And so, when they're subleasing, are they subleasing to Space Match, or are they subleasing to like myself who innovate? Uh, yeah, they listed on the Space Match. Oh, and they then listed. Anyone can use the mobile app to book the space. Ah, so the, the, do these turn into co-working spaces? Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so it's similar to Airbnb, but it's for corporate scale. Corporate scale. Yeah, so, so, what are some of the packages that you're offering for, like? Are you only looking for, can you do hot desking, like yeah, on a day to day? Yeah. Hot desking, meeting rooms. Uh, uh, mm, offices, but just big offices. Doctors. You're yeah. taking like a full building or a full flow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's a B2B model. So we go to the company that's interested to mm -hmm. monitor the utilization. Mm -hmm. First, we install sensors to monitor how, uh, how spaces are utilized. And based on the utilization, we uh, we recommend that they can sublease this uh, amount that, so that they can uh, save money, they can earn more revenue, they can save energy, they, uh, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, what about like um, access? Because I can imagine some some of these companies yeah. they usually have like their own access uh, or you know authentication to allow people in the building. Yes. So, uh, is yeah. there any mingling between their staff and these uh, external people that are renting the yeah, extra I mean, space? Uh, uh, the access control and stuff like that, we are we, we take care of uh, all these uh, uh -huh. items. The access control, the data privacy, the data security, uh -huh. all these things that we are uh, focusing so much on these uh, issues. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enabling uh, out, outsiders to access the space, uh -huh. this will be managed by the house company itself. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, how long have you been doing this? So, this is uh, one year now. One year. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. Yeah. And so, you're based where? We are based in Singapore. You're based in Singapore. Singapore. And so, and your focus is on the corporates that are in Singapore? Yes. At the moment, yes. Only Singapore. And then we extend to the Southeast Asia. Okay. Market. I yeah. see. So, why did you choose Singapore? Uh, yeah, to I start mean, with. Yeah. Uh, so, we, we uh, this company started from NUS, the National University of Singapore. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we, we decided that our launch market will be in Singapore and then we will extend in the, in the Southeast Asian market and then uh, globally. Okay, okay. So what has been like one of the most interesting achievement that you've uh, had so far? Yeah, or interesting we had, story? We yeah. so many workspaces now listed on the platform. We have around 300 uh, workspaces around Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is one of the largest uh, working space providers in Singapore. Mm -hmm. It's called the, exec the Executive Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Now we are looking forward to uh, uh, extend this to B2B, uh, uh, B2B market. Mode. Yeah, so because that other corporate companies yeah, can exactly. also use your... Yeah, for, yeah like uh, satellite offices or... Yeah, we are conducting a pilot study with uh, a pilot uh, uh, project with NUS mm. and with Kajima, which is mm -hmm. the, the yeah. large companies uh -huh. Yeah, um, and yeah, because many big companies has underutilized office space. I mean, the utilization especially they, during COVID. Yeah, after COVID, after COVID most yeah. people are working remotely, you know, from home. And so, even if they had like a, yeah. a sitting space for like 250 people, probably maybe a quarter of them are going into yeah, the office yeah, at any yeah. given day. That's correct. That's yeah, correct. so there's always and this plenty. Is globally, this is a global issue. It's a global issue, and yeah. most companies are now going to. They're deciding to sell their yeah, building yeah, if they yeah. don't have any use for it. Yeah, so I think correct. this is a good solution for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.
Okay, so I'm right here at this stand. There's nobody here, but uh, there's this guide dog of the future. It's Aroma Assist, as you can see. They have this robotic guide dog. I'm sure it has like some navigation tech an interactive system that allows for somebody to essentially, you know, exchange a real dog, which you have to take care of like a baby or a human, to a robot that you just turn on and off uh, with the battery, you know, turning on and off the battery. So this is where the world is uh, moving to. And so this is what they have here. Very fascinating. It looks like they've already launched it in China and Singapore. Very fascinating. Here we have Taiwan. On this corner we have Canada. All right, so here I am at Steady gum. Steady gum. And they have, uh, they're showing me how they've developed this, um, yeah, what is this? So what, what would I call this one? So this is like a vest, a shoulder a strap. A vest, a vest, yeah. okay. So it, it straps on your shoulder. Yeah. So it distributes uh, a level amount of pressure. So ah. you don't carry the whole weight of the camera. Exactly, yeah. okay. So my arm is free. Ah, so the arm is free and then it, it has this like harness thing harness that you thing. put, you yes. plug in your equipment and then you can uh, hold it and carry so it. Okay, if okay. I want to do a, like a hip shot or a shot, uh -huh. I go down. Ah. So I have both my, friend, both my hands free. Yeah. I can do zooming mm. and I can do focusing. Okay, cool. And then I can come up back. Nice. There you go. All right. I can lock it in place. Yeah. And just film. Okay. Just awesome. stand there. Yeah, thank you. Yep. So here, mm -hmm. we'll stretch it down. Oh yeah, so it stretches. And now and then you can hold your yeah. Very stable, I'm not even shaking. Mm. You know if you use your arm by itself, right. it's gonna be very uh, shaky after a while. Right. It will go like that. Yeah. Because your muscle is you get tired. running out of there. Yes. Of yes. That's it. Ah, so this down. one kind of holds it together. Yeah, so for somebody who does this like uh, recordings, like for weddings or weddings, events. Yes, weddings, events, anything you need a fast movement. Yeah, a fast movement. Quick run and gun. Yeah. This is it. So then you just have this shoulder pad. Yeah. Ah, very good. <laughs> very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So this is what? This is a trachomatic? Yeah, so basically we customers flow and give that data. We analyze customers behavior and based on that we give the data to our clients. So you analyze customer behavior? Yeah, so for example oh. for this heat map, uh, we tell the customers how many window shoppers, potential buyer, how many customers they have, which of their product is doing well. So the red color zone indicates that uh, that is the most visited spots by customers or potential buyers. Like that product is really popular. Oh! So a lot of our clients use this to determine which of their products is doing well, which is not doing well. Maybe they could offer some a member uh, some 
Oslo's baby. Uh huh. So we usually set a 30 second grace period to differentiate between window shopper and potential buyer. Let's say they just pass through the shop within the 30 seconds, and mm -hmm. we say that they are a window shopper. Mm. But let's say they are hanging around there more than 30 seconds, they are looking, checking out each product, mm -hmm. then we say they are potential buyer. Mm. When they finally proceed to the checkout counter, we mm. say, okay, hi, this is the number of customers you have. Mm. Potential customers, okay. Hello. Yeah, okay, interesting. So I guess my question to you would be, you know there are some uh, stores that switch their, their products. They move them from one shelf to the next. Is there one way maybe you can... Uh, can you use this to really validate that that's an interesting you know like an in-demand product because you may have put it in a maybe at the front of the entrance mm. and so that's where maybe your heat map shows that you know they there's a demand but then if they push it towards the back yeah, are you okay. able to tell like as long yeah. as they are within the camera view and let's mm -hmm. say the customer informs us okay i want to change to here can you change the zone naming along so basically how we draw the heat map is using zoom Basically, how we draw is we use this zoning. Mm -hmm. So, like the shelf zone, the entry point, the pause. So, let's say they are moving the product from here to here. Mm. Then, yes, we can uh, give you the data based on the zoning itself. Mm. So, from, even for this, oh. they move the product, they can still see which product is very popular. I see. They can ah. use the data to back up. Uh, what Great idea. Yeah, so I assume like most of your clients are like supermarkets and retail yeah. shops and... We also have uh, customers from other industries like hospitals. Okay. They want to monitor how many are ex uh, exceeding the waiting time. Like, ah. Oh. In so, essence, we're looking at any, any businesses that's got an interest in people. Interest in people. Okay. Who has an interest in people. So for example, you're looking at the my sector. There are a lot of people around. You want to have the data of these people. Where do they go? Where do they where the crowd appearance? Um, where do they spend time on? Ah. So it goes across library, um, museums, tourism, hospitals, education, malls and retail especially. Ah. Yeah. So we gather this data, we consolidate them, mm. and we make sure they can visualize this from a business analytics point of view. Mm. So we can extract insights rather okay. than just looking at numbers. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Can this be used to detect uh, shoplifters? Um, no. Can. N okay, no. Yes and no, as in we can blacklist the person. And if we know this person has a database, we have got a picture, we can blacklist him. Mm -hmm. But whether he shoplifts or not, we do not track. You cannot tell. Ah, I see. All of them are uh, real-time data because, like, real-time data. Okay. Yeah, because mm. some of the customers want to know when do I have sudden fluctuation of customers, mm. or when has someone been waiting for more than thirty minutes. Mm. So during instances like that, we send a Telegram notification to either the manager to or say, "Hey, person. there's a long queue over yeah. here. Can you go take care of it?" Or like in hospitals, okay, you have this patient who has been waiting for more than thirty minutes. Maybe you want to check them out. Maybe make sure that they are feeling alright. Mm. So that's how we deploy to different industries. I see. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. We've been around for 10 years, so we're not supposed yeah. to be here. Uh, yeah, that's what <laughs> she just mentioned. A startup, a startup place, right? But we, because we work very closely with NUS, we came from NUS, uh, and uh, we were incubated from NUS. Okay. So we are already at SME. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. So in terms of your product, like, are you developing this in-house? Yes, we own the, uh, we own the software. We oh, develop okay. it ourselves. Okay. So that makes us a lot of different, uh, a lot of difference in our solution as to the resellers, because the resellers will never understand the domain knowledge. Mm. Their job is just to sell the product. And right. If you want to do any customization, right. Or any flexibility in terms of um, solutioning, mm. it can be a, it can be quite a challenge. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Okay, and your team that's developing is based in Singapore, or there? Uh, we have outsourced as well. It's based in Singapore, basically, uh, but we have got outsourced uh, developers in Myanmar, in India, and China. Ah, interesting. Yeah, this is all where the talents are. I see. So I was actually telling her that uh, I have a startup, Innovate Pod, and we outsource to Africa. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we outsource. Yeah. Yeah. We do, we do. yeah. Because, you know, looking at uh, Singapore, we're going to employ high uh, and higher talents. Mm -hmm. or, the e passes. Yeah, 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 it's complicated. Yeah. yeah we, we just don't have enough sufficient Singaporeans to support the number of foreigners. Yeah, true, true, true. 
Yeah. Interesting. Oh, thank you. All right, so there you have it. As you can see, like uh, a lot of universities in Asia do have an extension of innovation where they actually incubate their own students to, who are interested to pursue entrepreneurship and they give them all the tools that they need to launch their startup. So this one, as, I, as you just heard, is from uh, Indonesia. There's also, you know, um, like NUS, this is from Singapore. So you can see like uh, all the universities in Asia essentially have this focus to be part of the emerging economies and be able to produce the future companies and startups. So if you are talent that's uh, remote and you're looking to work in tech and you have less than five years of experience, you can connect with me using the link in the description so that we can see if there's potential for you to be part of the remote teams that we're building in Africa and other emerging markets. Watch this video next to get key summary of the takeaways from the event and from all the discussions that I had with startups, established companies, from the panel discussions and other exhibitions that were there for the duration of the three days. And so watch this video next and I'll see you there.